Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Market, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet, and I'd like to examine today what's occurring in the fleet market for the week of May 26th. And the good news is most of the OEM assembly plants have now either reopened or will soon reopen. The last of them, the Nissan plant in Smyrna, Tennessee, announced that it will start gradual recommencement of production on June 8th. And this is an important point to remember for all of the OEM assembly plants is they're all in the midst of a gradual ramp up of production. And it's important to remember that during this period, new vehicle deliveries will continue to be slower than what we've experienced in the past. Also during this gradual ramp up, uh, anticipate that outfitters are gonna continue to see a shortage of chassis, uh, but this will all be resolved as manufacturers increase their production um, to be commensurate with market demand. Now another area that's been experiencing good news in the fleet marketplace is in the resale market. And we've seen consistent improvement in resale activity over the past four weeks. And this is across various metrics. But probably the most important metric is conversion rates. Uh, this is the total number of vehicles that are consigned to auction that have actually been sold. So those conversion rates have been increasing uh, each of these four weeks. Um, also, other metrics that are showing positive signs is the improved resale value retention. We've seen improved buyer sentiment on the part of dealers, increased buying activity, and more importantly uh, is more and more physical auctions are now starting to reopen and allow in-lane bidding in conjunction with their online sales. However, the hardest hit segment of the fleet marketplace continues to be the car rental industry, which is also the segment that buys the largest number of fleet units. Here we've seen their revenues evaporate literally overnight with the collapse of airline travel. And this has affected all of the major car rental companies. And this came to a climax just this last Friday, May 22nd, with a late night announcement from Hertz Global Holdings that it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection after failing to reach an agreement with its secured creditors. Uh, chapter 11 bankruptcy uh, extends to the three Hertz brands, namely Hertz, Dollar, and Thrifty, that are operating in the US and Canada. Now, Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection allows a company to operate while it's devising a plan to restructure its debt, to pay its creditors, and also to turn around its business so it can reemerge from bankruptcy. And under the auspices of the bankruptcy court, this prevents creditors from forcing a company into what's called Chapter 7 liquidation. So typically, uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy gives companies a repeat, reprieve from its debtors, uh, allows them to reorganize. And another important point to remember is that Chapter 11 allows a company to restructure its debt. And oftentimes a bankruptcy court will require creditors to settle for less than the full payment, especially if a turnaround plan is deemed feasible. And in a way, Hertz, along with the rest of the car rental industry, is in a waiting game. We're all hoping that the economy recovers business travel recommences, that rental revenues begin flowing again. And during this interim period, Hertz does have $1 billion in cash available to keep its operations running. Now, one of the proposals that's been kind of leaked um, um, as a way for Hertz to emerge from bankruptcy protection uh, and pay back its secured creditors is to liquidate 30,000 vehicles per month between now and the end of calendar year 2020. Altogether, this would represent 210,000 units over the next six months. So the question is, what impact will this strategy have on used vehicle prices in the wholesale market? And in particular, what impact, if any, will this have on the resale values for commercial fleet vehicles? Well, the first thing to remember is that not 100% of those 30,000 units per month are going to be going to auction. If you look prior to the pandemic, about 40% of the units that Hertz remarketed 
we're sold direct to dealer and I anticipate that to be continuing. And another third were sold direct to consumers as you've seen their used car lots around the country. Typically these units either sold to dealers or sold direct to consumers tend to have a higher margin. Now prior to the pandemic only about a quarter or so of the Hertz units were actually sold at auction. However, this, this volume fluctuates. Uh, it can go up and down depending on what the strategy is. And as recently as 2017, as much as 40% of the Hertz vehicles were remarketed at auction. But current remarketing strategies have been to focus on direct-to-dealer sales, direct-to-consumer, and uh, about a quarter or so going to auction. Plus also, the Hertz liquidation strategy, vehicle liquidation strategy, needs to be approved by the bankruptcy court. And a lot of people within the industry are saying that there's really a distinct possibility that the bankruptcy court will require that these units be spread out among representative auctions, either independents or major auction chains, and this could this would spread out the inventory uh, over a wider geographic footprint, minimizing the risk of market saturation in specific regions. Also, as we're entering the summer months, traditionally vehicle consignments during the summer period have been low, and this new influx of rental vehicles could be welcome to help alleviate the current constraints that we have on inventory. Auctions would like more vehicles, uh, dealers want more vehicles and here's an opportunity for this new inventory source to open up. The feeling is among remarketers is the next 60 to 90 days these vehicles will sell well in the market um, as will most vehicles selling in the wholesale marketplace. However, there is a concern about what's going to be happening in the third and fourth quarter of this year. You know, one of the concerns is that as we start re-emerging out of the, um, the shutdown, economic shutdown, you know, automotive lending is going to start tightening up um, as a result of an uptick in consumer delinquencies, similar to what occurred in the 2008-2009 financial crisis. And, and this is probably the best benchmark that we have in trying to predict what might be happening as we emerge um, uh, out of this economic shutdown. There's also an anticipation that there's going to be a greater number of repos uh, that are going to be added to the wholesale inventory, especially in the fourth quarter of the year. And again, using 2008-2009 financial crisis as a historical benchmark, you know what happened then and most likely what will happen uh, in this period is that those vehicles selling in the $8,000 to $14,000 range will see the greatest drop in conversions and residual value retentions. Those vehicles selling under $8,000, which includes most commercial fleet vehicles, will have the strongest demand and retention. And that's what we're seeing in today's market, and it's also what we saw in the 2008-2009 uh, crisis. And, and this is being driven by subprime automotive lenders, um, and this promises to grow, especially if unemployment rates remain at higher levels uh, in that double-digit range. Um, in addition, more dealers are feeling upbeat about future retail demand of used vehicles, especially as I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, there's this ramp-up period which is going to take time for new vehicle inventory to, uh, to build up on dealer lots. And in this interim period to meet pent-up demand, dealers will be switching consumers over to used vehicle sales. So with that, that concludes my report on the state of the industry for the week of May 26th. And in the meantime, stay safe and stay informed. Thank you very much.